So in our energy-efficient modern age, we've moved towards lamps that operate from an entirely different phenomenon. Fluorescent lights work a bit like the northern lights, where electrical energy gives the sky an eerie glow. I'm pumping the air out of this tube to recreate the upper atmosphere. A blast of a few thousand volts should make that low-pressure air produce an almost magical effect. Look at that! I mean, it's a weird pink light, as you may expect from a kind of homemade aurora. Of course, it's not magic. It's atomic emission of pure, cold light. And I'm pretty chuffed with it. Though it's not much like sunlight yet, but I can fix that. How do you go from that beautiful pink to the classic white fluorescent we're used to? Well, what you have to do is coat the inside of the tube with a powder, a mix of chemicals called phosphors that gives off a whole range of colours when stimulated by the UV light that's also given off by those atoms. See how this goes. Oh! It's a pretty white light. All strip lights work like this, and it's what's coiled up inside low-energy bulbs. It's still made up of different colours, but this time, instead of it being a smooth spectrum from red to violet, instead, it's distinct bands of colour. The different bands are produced by the different glowing powders. Now, you only need a few bands to trick the eye into seeing white. But unless the right sky blue is there, there's nothing for those newly discovered receptors. Our modern lives are a jumble of these different artificial lights, and it could be playing havoc with our body clock. I'm going to do a little experiment, and I think it's a world first. I'm going to see how much of that blue light I am exposed to over a typical 24 hours, and when. Which means carrying this kit around with me to analyse the spectrum wherever I go. Now, I'm hoping Professor Foster can tell me what all this might mean for my body. OK, Jim, so, so what we've looked at here is the amount of light in the blue, the blue skylight at 480 nanometers. OK. It's very clear that you went outside just after 9 o'clock and the light levels have just rocketed. They've gone absolutely huge. I cycle to work. It takes about half an hour, so this day I had to pop out and do a bunch of other stuff as well. And that's really important because it's morning light that is so important for setting the body clock. So, wittingly or not, you've actually um, seen light during the most important part of the day. So, in the winter, when you're kind of going to work and it's dark, I mean, it's sort of just getting light as you go into work quite often. Are you effectively giving yourself jet lag? Your body's not sure what time of day it is. Yes, and there's increasing evidence that that's exactly what we're doing. And so I think there's a real opportunity here for, you know, in the underground, in the tubes, we could have augmented lighting. We could actually try and provide, you know, a brighter morning light environment, um, which would help stabilise internal time.